Welcome to the RJI Futures Lab, where we help you make your organization more innovative. I'm Ruben Stern. This week, social messaging apps with potential for news. New social media platforms continue to spring up all the time. The Futures Lab's Berkeley Lovelace checked out a few messaging apps that have gained attention recently and might have implications for journalism. Peach is a two-month-old messaging app from an original founder of Vine. It allows users to share photos, GIFs, drawings, and status updates using magic words. Magic words function like commands. Type GIF, for example, and the user is prompted to find and share a GIF. Or type shout, and it will make the user's text larger. Similar to Facebook's poke feature, users can also blow a kiss, wave, send a cake, and six other options. It's very free range, there's no character count, and it allows for a range of media types. Because Peach is such a new app, it hasn't established a firm audience yet. It's been pointed out that the app has potential for sensor journalism. Peach uses the phone's built-in sensor to gather data and visualize it with emojis. For instance, type weather, and Peach will use the phone's internal GPS to share user location and weather visualized as an emoji. The feature also works for events, time, movement, battery power, songs, calendar entries, and even level of noise. It's a new way of sharing that is atypical and different from most other messaging apps. Bottom line, Peach offers newsrooms the options to use sensor technology on a messaging app, but because it's so new, it's hard to say if it'll be around in the future. Peach is only available for iOS devices, but soon will be available for Android. Line is a five-year-old messaging app with more than 600 million users around the world. It allows users to send text, images, video, and audio. It also offers free voice and video conference calls. There is even a feature that allows organizations to connect directly with readers on a personal text messaging-like interface. Lots of news organizations are using it. BuzzFeed, TechCrunch, Mashable, the BBC, Wall Street Journal, and The Economist. Users can go to official accounts and add news organizations to their list of contacts. Once added, users can see a list of stories where they can like, comment, or share. Adding the accounts also enable the ability to chat directly with news organizations. The Wall Street Journal used the app to engage directly with readers sometimes, prompting readers to tell them about their experience with a particular subject. They also used lock screen notifications and posted their articles frequently to the app. The Economist is experimenting with the platform to promote visual data and content like photos and videos. Bottom line, Line offers news organizations a private one-on-one -on -one interaction with its users, but because so many news organizations are using it, it might be difficult for others to establish themselves. Line is available on most mobile and PC platforms. Kick is a messaging app launched in 2010 with more than 240 million young active users. It uniquely allows users or Kicksters to send instant messages without providing a phone number or location data. Users must still register a name, birthday, and email address. The app feels personal because it looks a lot like a standard text message app in a smartphone. NBC News was an early adopter of the platform. Their account lets users share and find real-time news tailored to the user's interest. Once users have created an account, they tap the chat icon in the right-hand corner and search for NBC News. Users can then text message NBC with keywords like health or technology, and the news organization will send current content from their website. NBC can also send messages directly to your lock screen. Bottom line, users have the choice to preserve their identity, but it's so close to a messaging platform that using it for news is more complicated. Kick is also available on iOS, Android, and Windows phones. Yik Yak is an anonymous messaging app launched in 2013 that allows users to post up to 200 characters on a bulletin board-like interface. Other users can comment and like or dislike a post by voting up or down. Yik Yak's audience is continuing to grow, but mostly used by college students. The Verge wrote that more than 2,000 college campuses are active on it. And now the BBC is using Yik Yak as a way to start a conversation with millennials. In February, the news organization used the platform to post questions about mental health issues and other topics. They received thousands of upvotes and hundreds of responses. Digiday reported that the BBC said Yik Yak was a great way to get honest responses because of the anonymity. The Washington Post echoed the sentiment after Ted Cruz spoke at Liberty University to announce his presidential candidacy, but also mentioned an issue. Because users are anonymous, it makes it difficult for news organizations to attribute the source or know if somebody is trolling. That could change after Yik Yak this month asked its users to create usernames. 
bottom line, you might get an honest perspective of what a young audience is thinking, but you don't know who's saying it or whether they are credible. Yik Yak is available on iOS and Android platforms. For the Futures Lab, this is Berkeley Lovelace. Facebook also is getting ready to allow publishers to distribute content through its Messenger app. You'll find more information along with this video. And that's it for this report from the RJI Futures Lab. I'm Ruben Stern. We'll see you in the future. Thank <music> you.